Welcome back to the weekly news roundup. These are recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern at Standard Time. However, next week, once again, there will not be a live show, but uh, I will see if I can get us at least a premiered show. Never know if that's going to happen or not. But anyway, let's go and get diving on into the news. This is kind of more of an update. A couple weeks ago, we um, we did a article looking at facial recognition, and I was I was not shocked they're doing facial recognition. I was shocked they're doing it in Kmart because I thought that company went completely bad. Up. Well, it turned out a lot of the guys from uh, Down Under told me that it's actually still a big company over in Australia, just not here in the States, where it completely went bankrupt and every single one of them has closed. So uh, Kmart was one of the stores. 7-Eleven is the other one here that we're doing a whole lot of closed circuit TV and full-fledged biometrics scanning people. And after that article uh, went out a few weeks ago, uh, it turns out that the investigators started to poke around and say, does this actually violate the privacy acts that Australia happens to have? And they didn't get any solid conclusions one way or the other yet. It's still early in the investigation, but all of them have kind of said, no, nah, we've stopped doing that all of a sudden. Meaning it probably was in violation of the law and voluntarily withdrawing it would probably a little be a little bit better of an option. So just an FYI when you go in. And by the way, grocery stores, they have some of the most interesting bio te uh, biometric technology there is. They actually, in some of the, the glass doors that they use and they put you know the ice cream behind, they're actually monitoring your eyes and your focusing and looking around to see what all is, what are you looking at? What are you looking at here? What are you looking at there? They kind of do this to, measure and gauge your effectiveness and, and their effectiveness at advertising do you seem happy or sad they do all this stuff from those glass windows in grocery stores so be careful grocery stores are, are a good place to get spied on they're also a really bad place to bring your smartphones into uh, because they like pairing up with the bluetooth and wi-fi which you should keep off at all times unless you're actively using it at that moment and don't be actively using it in a grocery store they track you and follow you all over the place but there is also an uptick of facial recognition cameras in UK retail chains also being uh, challenged by privacy groups. So it wasn't just going on in on Australia. It was also getting, going on in the UK as well. So shoppers at grocery store chains across southern England are being surveilled with facial recognition cameras, prompting legal complaint by civil rights campaigners. Privacy group Big Brother Watch has submitted a complaint against Southern Cooperative's use of cameras, claiming it is Orwellian and unlawful. Well, that's nice. Big Brother Watch thinks, thinks something is Orwellian. Well, isn't that... Um, a novel approach. <laughs> Bad jokes all around. Uh, so we'll kind of see what happens. But basically, they're trying to raise awareness of what is going on inside of that. Well, uh, let's go ahead and move on to our next article. And this was one I was I was going to include this in the news last week and I just decided to uh, just kind of throw it out because it's kind of a non-issue. What happened is Google decided to remove the information about um, the app privacy settings that were embedded inside of apps from the website and rely exclusively on what the app developer said about their app. And remember, we looked at kind of a couple weeks ago, the FBI app, you know, put all your children's data in the FBI app. Don't worry. All data is transmitted securely, but we don't actually collect anything. Hmm. Figure that one out. Well, under the new policies, there'd be nothing about the data in there and everything would be reliant on what the app developer actually says. Whereas the old way actually utilizes looking at and analyzing the Java packages and, and things like that that are going into it. So they took it out and then there was so much backlash. Yeah, they kind of decided to put it back in. So this basically... Uh, it, it was kind of like the snaps here in Linux, right? We're not trusting the code anymore. We're trusting what they tell us about the code instead. Yeah, that's why I'm not a big fan of snaps. But um, so for one point in time, they, they had taken it out for a short period of time, about a week or two. And they've decided after a lot of backlash, they're going to go ahead and put that stuff back in. So if you are relying on that information of the website, which is based upon the libraries included and things like that, then you can get a better idea of the privacy and not rely on what the app developer says they're collecting or not collecting or doing or not doing. So that was an interesting move by Google and it didn't work. So that's actually kind of good news in that respect. 
Well, yet another post row article because every article is going all post road. Experts share how to keep your data private. You know, I've been, I've said this over and over and over again. The best thing about this whole Roe versus Wade overturning thing is that it's causing people to actually start caring about their privacy. Well, congratulations. That is a somewhat sub suggestive um, thing, being as that. You know, fertility apps are one of the things we're recommending. So basically, a lot of people are talking about deleting your fertility apps or getting burner phones and things like that. All decent things if you're trying to hide your uh, anonymity. But they included a few basic things. I mean, there's basic things to not be tracked around the world. Of course, um, uh, the the church that I that I attend is part of uh, part of the. Um, campaign for Mastriano in our county, and so they uh, they actually showed. Um, I think it was it wasn't an outreach of the church, it was an outreach of the Republican Party, but they showed the the uh, video that's probably banned. Something about something like a couple thousand donkeys or something like that. Um, and uh, so they showed that tonight, and uh, everyone's like, "Wow, they're wow!" And it's like hearing people go. I mean, I really wish they would have stopped to explain exactly how the data was collecting that so if you have not seen uh, seen a couple thousand donkeys uh, then one of the components not the only component one of the components is they were grabbing all of this app data that I'm always warning you against and they're plotting this out and following the same cell phones as they're going from activist group to Dropbox activist group Dropbox whatever else and that's what their uh, their entire principle was about um, and so with that, uh, with that being said, um, people still aren't concerned as much with the privacy. I'd rather we have a lot more privacy and that type of analysis as harder to pull off. I'd really prefer that. And I'd really prefer it if people, if it takes, if it takes the backlash of overturning Roe versus Wade to, uh, cause people to start thinking about their privacy. Good. Good. At least we're thinking about it. But this article had a few different elements of cures. Here's a few answers that won't be uh, on what will and won't be explicitly illegal. They say uh, the following key pieces of advice from Lock and Code are those worried about how to secure their choices. Uh, above all, limit sensitive information when you share them with others and store in your own devices. Amen to that. Okay. We need to stop putting every bit of information on a cell phone. Your cell phone should not be used for anything but making simple communication. We should all abolish smartphones and go back to dumb phones and do things on computers again where you have a lot more control. And I know a uh, hated one just did a video a few weeks back saying that the phones are a lot better because the you know they have privacy centers and, and computers don't. The entire premise of the video, though, was wrong. And I love the guy's channel, just an FYI. I would recommend it. But the whole cornerstone premise of his whole video is wrong in that apps have the ability to... Simply throw in a library to collect all sorts of data. Computer programs don't. You'd have to explicitly put that stuff in, but it's easier to track down what a computer program is doing and what it's not doing. Way easier to track down than to track down the convoluted stuff that's going on behind a proprietary wall on your smartphone. And so there's a lot more to be said about it. The computer is way more secure, well, way more private. I will, I will say I don't know which one's more secure, but way more private is the computer than is the phone if you're doing it right because phones have apps and apps have easy access libraries. Okay, so don't put information on your devices. Practice extreme caution on social media and don't post about seeking or providing such services. Um, how about get off of social media altogether? Better for your mental health that way. Three, use privacy-preserving search engine that won't record your history when looking up services. Amen to that. Switch to one of the better search engines that's not storing up your data. I unfortunately can't really point to a good to a really good one. We got Brave, which has some dubious stuff in the background. We have DuckDuckGo, who actually whitelists Microsoft stocking. We have StartPage, which I think is pretty good. But would you guys, a lot of people use Tor. Starpage is like, let's be a privacy search engine. Hey, um, are you a robot? Tell us about yourself. Screw you. I'm not telling you about myself. You're supposed to be a anonymous search engine. Behave like it. At least DuckDuckGo works if you're on Tor. 
my lord start page. So I can't really point out a super good one, but hey, let's avoid Bing and Google and Yahoo. All right, let's start with that. Um, let's see. Use a secure messenger app with disappearing messages when discussing such bad things with friends or family. Um, yeah, just an FYI. I think they might be alluding to Snapchat. Yeah, nothing disappears. But using good solid end-to-end -end encryption uh, app applications that have good solid end-to-end -end encryption, that might be a better thing. And Or, hey, here's a thought. Why don't you bring it up in person? Um, let's see. And read the resources on our services by... Okay, well, there's... Uh, EFF has some stuff on abortion services, I guess, if you're trying to be private. Of course, I would not recommend you... Um, kill babies inside of you but um, that being said uh, we'll go ahead and move on because I was interested in the privacy stuff not the political stuff in that article and on to our final story don't look now but Congress might actually pass a good privacy bill um, I'll just note this is wired no they're lying <laughs> it's, it's not a good bill it's a horrendously bad bill it brings us something slightly better um, but it misses some radical key components of uh, uh, of the bill so uh, basically there's a is this the one with bullet points or not nah this one's not I thought I had an article I thought this article had bullet points alright so basically one of the things they're, they're saying in the bill is you can only collect what's absolutely essential for the services Unfortunately, one of the services they whitelisted is targeted ads, <laughs> which basically undermines the entire purpose of the stupid thing. So, no, it's not a good privacy bill. It's a bunch more nonsense, but at least it has a little bit things. They say they have 17 permitted purposes spelled out, authenticating users, which unfortunately can collect more information than it should. Um, like authenticating users. Good. You just whitelisted them to have some creeper in a tent with a webcam. So look at both sides of your photo ID over a webcam or to authenticate that you're the, the right person to be taking the test for the tutoring services that were completely unsecuring um, preventing fraud which basically is everything completing transactions okay um, and just enough information for the credit card but with those basic three things yeah a company has a, a whitelist to collect literally everything out there literally everything out there including targeted ads which is a bunch of nonsense so um, yeah they're they're basically, it, it gets closer. It has some limitations on, on storage and how it can be stored and stuff like that. But it's still woefully insignificant. It doesn't work and no wired. It's not even remotely close to an actually good privacy bill. But hey, wired can pretend. Well, anyway, if you want to help support the channel, we do have affiliates. Today we are highlighting Linode. TLM.li forward slash Linode will get you $100 in credit on any new account. Good for 60 days. You can spin up as many Linodes as you would like and try it all out. You burn up that 100 bucks and then decide at the end of 60 days what you'd like to keep and pay for just those things moving forward. You can do all sorts of things like creating Jellyfin servers or VPNs or hosting websites or Jitsi servers. Just and Those are just things I do with it. There's a bunch of other little fun things you can do. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, Oh, actually, we have one more section. We have three security articles. Should we just go ahead and take care of those security articles? Let's just go ahead and do that right away. Just keeping it kind of brief, uh, first of them are just a couple of uh, patches and software to be aware of. Drupal, if you are uh, managing a Drupal site, there is a, a big release which allowed pretty much a full takeover of your site. Uh, this has already been patched, so just update to the latest version of Drupal, and you will be good on that. Uh, basically, what, what, what happened is the, the way the CMSs will work is there's uh, they'll be have code scrubbers and things. Well, you could run up a um, you could run up a certain code for a um, for some. Am I missing this up with another store? Yeah, I think I'm mis mixing up this store with another one. But basically, there was a um, a way that the you would import some data and it would scrub data out. Well, if you input a certain data in conjunction with an attempted an SQL injection, which is done by running some code through a web script form, uh, then you could actually take over the Drupal site. Uh, so in this case, it prevented um, it prevented you from um, uploading 
malicious files, but the the system was broken if you used it in conjunction with another service. And so if you're running Drupal, go ahead and update that. Uh, Presta Shop is another one. This is one of the e-commerce sites I've actually never worked with. This is the one where they're fighting with, you do an SQL injunction, injection to an empty string on the homepage that results in a file curiously called blm.php. Um, and then if you did a simultaneous get execution to the blm.php, it allowed you to execute any form of arbitrary instructions and take over the entire server. Whoops. <laughs> I don't know how in the world that works, but it does. I don't know how anybody figured that out, but it does. Um, also, this has been patched up. So uh, if you uh, if you are running or controlling a Presta shop, make sure that you are updating that to avoid that type of thing. And on to our final article here is that uh, verified Twitter vulnerability exposes data from 5.4 million accounts. So yet another Twitter breach, uh, dropping that stock price even lower, lower in the event that they uh, force the Musk man to uh, buy the bird, in which case, you know, he might get away of paying a little bit less because they keep on having these breaches and hacks and all sorts of things. So this is actually a vulnerability that was identified um, by a hacker one user. He submitted the bug on January 1st. He was actually paid out about $5,000 from Twitter staff. They verified it. But before Twitter could really patch it, the all the, the code was executed and all the databases of the users were actually found on the, on the dark web. And so uh, basically this was a bug exclusively with the Android app that allowed you to do searches of usernames with phone number, email combinations, and you could automate it and create a database of Twitter users based upon that. And then with that database, then you could go ahead and uh, go fishing for uh Fishing for people with bad security. So uh, that one apparently is hopefully uh, patched up. But yeah, we'll, uh, I guess we'll, we'll kind of see. Well, we do have a uh, Patreon page if you'd like to um, support uh, all the different channels we do. I still need to add the travel channel to this, but I'll get that done when I get the website done for that. Uh, but we are actually active on the, all the other channels now. We have relaunch activation on writing done right. Uh, we have some Christian studies and Linux privacy technology. So you can head on over here to Patreon if you'd like. We did just update the Patreon list. So if your name is there and you don't want it to be, let me know. And if uh, we we have overlooked your name and it's not on the list, also let me know. Uh, and I have uh, added a process and this makes it a lot easier to update that list. Uh, so we'll hopefully get more updated in the future. And that's the end of this section here. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.